So hello, welcome to another episode of Commander Fodder. So you can see this is a pretty stripped down starting pool. Owing to the fact that I featured a deck in this week's Deck Musings episode which had a large proportion of 5th edition cards, I thought it was only fair to take my um, virtual uh, cards, uh, the six packs of virtual cards that I use as a, a sort of prerequisite for this episode to take those from 5th edition. So I opened six booster packs, six virtual booster packs of 5th edition and in amongst the rares, because I always just pick at least one rare and use that as a starting point for the deck, uh, one of those rares was Meekstone. So yeah, I thought I'd give it a go. So Meekstone, if you're not familiar with it, which it hasn't been printed a ton of times, is this artifact. It was reprinted in 5th edition, as were all the cards in 5th in edition, because of course they were re as a reprint set, as corsets were back then. Um, or well, everything past, you know, things like Alpha, Beta, I suppose because those were all first printings by definition. But uh, yeah, this particular printing, you can see here we've got creatures with power three or greater do not untap during their controller's untap phases. Let's just have a quick look at all the printings. So you can see, yep, um, you know, way back here, And then reprinted in some core sets up to 7th edition. And then nothing apart from some special stuff here and this 10th edition shenanigans that went on. So I think what the cheapest version of it looks like it could be... Where is it? Yeah, around here. By the looks of things. So what commander to use? Um, yeah, Arcades, Arcades, Arcades Strategist, one green, white, blue. It's a three, five with flying vigilance. It's an elder dragon. And it's from M19. Whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So what we're doing here is we're going with a Defender theme. So we've got, you can see it says creatures power 3 or greater do not untap during their controllers untap phases so the idea is we want creatures in our deck which have low power and defenders walls you know those sort of creatures um, have that often have that so and you'll notice here the way this is worded it says it assigns combat damage it doesn't say it swaps its power or anything like that, which could interact with Meekstone in a negative way. So that's where I'm hoping it, it's going to go. And, you know, so a, basically, yeah, a large toughness creatures with power that's below this Meekstone threshold thematically. You'll notice I've also pulled artwork from 5th edition. For my land base and that's it i've not included anything else so let's just see with this minimal starting point where that takes us like i said it's it's you know probably gonna be toughness matters just because of the ability here and the fact that we don't want and also yeah low low power but uh, we'll see whether edh rec plays our game so 
So where should I start? Well, I think I'm going to look at other enchantments that might amplify or what's the word I'm looking for? Synergize, replicate the effects on either Meek Stone or the Commander. Each combat, each creature you control with size combat damage equal. Oh, no, wait, there we go. Creatures you control can attack as though they didn't have defender. Excellent. Okay, another card also formation. Creatures you control have vigilance. Oh, that's really cool. So not only a lot of the times are our opponents are not able to. Let's just check the wording on Meek Stone. Where is it? Un, not untapped during the controller's untap phases, but our creatures have vigilance, which means they don't tap when they attack. We will have some of that. That seems pretty obscene. Um, what else? Whenever a creature comes into play under your control, you may destroy. When you control, you may gain life equals to its toughness. Stops us dying. Oh, we're not more creatures. Mm, depends, I suppose. Now, do we want that as a removal spell? Because. Mm. I like the look of that. Let's just go with that for the moment. We'll come back. I think I'm going to do land next because I tend to forget about utility lands. So we are playing three colours. Go with that. It's going to push it in a certain direction. Now, do I want to play? So I'm just trying to think what combinations of dual lands that I want to play. sort of dual land. Got canopy Vista. Maybe I'll play that cycle. Okay. I'm sure I'll be back. Well, 
We'll just obviously rebalance the uh, the manner at some point. Jerkin artifacts. Oh, yeah, shoot sphere. Oh, bit of a soaring, I suppose. That's interesting. So there's that. See, I could also equip up my my cookies. It's a three five. What's the wording on the weak stone? Maybe I just want that sitting. If that's the case, then most of the time it's just going to be sitting there with its effect because, of course, it's a three. Yeah, I need to be very mindful. Maybe I'll play the signets and use artifacts more of as a mana generation than anything else. Put a shield sphere in there. We definitely don't want anything that pumps power. <laughs> All right. Better have some spot removal here. I suppose we could have one in each of the three colours. There might be a certain uh, logic to that. And that puts a 3-3 green beast token in play as well. It's path. Cyclonic Rift. Okay, Kramer's Wheel. Sounds good. The beast within in white. Sorceries. So here, where do we go for ramp? Each player uses any number of creature they control with total power four or less. Sacrifices all the other creatures. 
that's good. Sorcery speed, sorcery speed, sorcery speed, mass removal. Instance sorceries, land, enchantments. Let's see what planeswalkers or planeswalker is suggested to us. That one spits out wall tokens. But it can't. Yeah, so with these, really, we just care about the static ability. Because without being able to replenish the tokens here, and I suppose it, there are ways to do that, but whether I want to take up slots, but having everything I have, so giving me X proof is interesting. So that would just be me. And this here yeah, again duplicates the effect we're after, so maybe I'll put those in. Okay, 68, so this is all creatures now. So let's go. And see what we get. So we're gonna see a lot of walls. And basically all in on Defender, so I definitely want to play that. All of Denial, that's Shroud. Yep. And of course anything that um, synergizes with Defender. Also is if you have Defender you get this. If you control with power or toughness, one or less. Oh, yeah, I'm playing green and blue, so that's nice. You know, and also there's there's a lot of cheap, relatively high number of cheap spells that are either walls or care about walls. Okay, you want it all. Yeah. I have all of roots because we've seen that in uh, deck musing up deck musings episodes. Okay, Alicia Norn, what's this up to? Actually, I do have to be, uh, I wasn't following my own advice there. I, I'm pretty sure none of these have got high power on them so far. Interesting.
looks like fun. Let's just get back in here. What have we left? 84, yeah, so still lots of slots. Another, what, 60? So the thing I will do is now I've started adding those in, I will just do this because then it's slightly to change the selection and we'll see what bubbles up. I don't think I'm seeing anything that's what's the word specifically synergizes directly with meek stone or replicates sorry replicates the effect but I was sort of expecting that once I started going down a defender route and there are a large number of you know, toughness um, you know, like asymmetrical creatures where the toughness is bigger than the power. And that's a popular theme for this particular legendary creature. Um, you know, so it was, it was either be that or all, all tribal or defenders, those sort of things. It's going to go in that direction. I mean, the other thing is, there's, you know, things like Door and the Siege Tower is the obvious one that springs to mind, which is white, black, green. Where it assigns creature, and each creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. That's one possible possibility. It's interesting I haven't seen that suggested actually it's a pretty card Creatures power three or greater don't untap. So that I could just have for the effect. Again, some things are just going to sit there and get nerfed by my own effect, but but they actually have an ability on them that I want. So it doesn't really matter. I don't really need dragons. Oh, doggo. What does Doggo do? Yeah. So I'll give it a card draw as well to boot. Interesting diplomatic card there. See again, this could just sit there. 
five and two green. Mm. Something to mess around with. Sometimes it's interesting to just put stuff in to try it out. Interesting bounce. How are we doing? Four cards. So we've got 30 creatures now. I don't know if I want to add any more creatures or not. Unless, of course, it's Wall of Frost. <laughs> And that. I do like those sort of cards. Wall of Nets. Okay, so let's just see if we switch this to any card. What bubbles to the surface for us? I'm feeling very relaxed at the moment, as you can probably tell. This is a very nice episode. Okay, so yeah, many creatures. Choose target permit card in your graveyard if it's been a three or less. If you don't put no, oh, but in your hand you can. So yeah, mainly creatures. Do I want this just sitting here? Because obviously anything with a meek stone type on that effect is gonna affect it. I think this just uh, yeah, I don't know. It's high cost, that's the only thing. Land. Yeah, let's see if we got anything with interesting utility on it. I mean, I could have added this cycle actually. Hmm. <laughs> Panorama. I tell you what, let's And the scroll notes. Simic Chamber. 
that one. Does it list the other one? If not, I'll probably have to try and add it manually. I suppose in keeping with the time period I should have added the what's that later the Karoo lands but they're more at home in one of colour decks just trying to find the other land because I just can't remember it off the top of my head. So we've got that one in and Simic Growth Chamber, which is the green blue. So green blue, we've got the white blue, so we want the white green one. Maybe that was there and I just didn't see it. Is that right? What do we got? So White's the most and green and blue are equal. So if I do something like that, I need to take one more off actually, I know that. I'm gonna have to be careful because a lot of my ramp cards are green. curve okay so let's export this and we'll do some sample hands it's obviously another deck where you can't really goldfish this so let's just see how the how quickly we get cards out really that's what we're interested in obviously this isn't going to come out till turn four and we start card drawing um that's the other thing one way of in the future of improving this deck is we might want to add more cards with a um 
an effect on it similar to Reliquary Tower. So there's some um, artifacts that do stuff like that. That's sort of um, spell book type cards as well. So that's something to think about. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, we get to draw a card. Oh, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> There's one thing about um, low cost creatures, you always get to do stuff. Right, or generally. Let's see that. Bad hand. So. Play there. We get to draw a card. There's a wall of ice. Make room. Wall of Tears, draw. Oh, we got Katama's Reach, even better. So, one thing we don't have, which is where we would want to use this, is we don't have any white. So, it shows up to two basic land cards. So, yeah, we could draw that and use that to, to get our white. Um, and really, I suppose it, it really depends on if we played that now. Um, before playing a land, then we could play that land. Um, although we can't really do anything with it because these people tap, we just have one single white mana. Or we could play the island now, play this, and then just have the planes in our hand. Suppose it doesn't really matter which creature you control. We should get that out, actually. Might be a better idea for the moment. Play them in. Oh, there's our planes anyway, so I didn't have to worry. That's the other possibility, I suppose. You could say if you've got um, stuff anyway, you might want to save this until such a point where you need to uh, draw land, or we have to play it. Um, yeah. So I could have got this fellow out and we're away at the races so yeah we're pretty much going to empty our hand fairly quickly <laughs> yeah don't really need the Kadama yeah, everything's playable, so yeah, don't know how path to exile. Yeah, it's one thing we haven't really seen any removal yet, so okay. Let's just do a, a couple of hands. I don't expect to have too much, much of a problem. I mean, I don't think we want to keep anything below a two land hand it's one even with some of the cards here we're pushing it a bit most of the stuff appears to be as you can see like two drops so as long as we've got two two mana we you know and of course again yeah we're in a three color deck so you have to be mindful of that there's our reliquary tower so if we did start to have to drawing a lot of cards off of some of these we'd we're in a good position What do I want to do here to... Mm, now saying that, I should have kept an eye on actually what we can, what we can and can't play here. Okay, nothing yet actually because we don't have any green. All our two drops are in green. So... Oh, we, we can get our... 
signet 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 out. Maybe I should do that. And it's all in. So does this now make this castable? Well, we have all our colours and we have enough mana. So the answer is yes. We do have a far seek. So if we wanted to it might be a good idea to crack a far seek. Oh we oh yeah we can. Just play that out. Look at the wording of the. Yeah, so that goes into play tapped. So, yeah. So we've got Beast Within, Numenic Wall. Our hand's pretty full here, so we need to start playing stuff out, I think. Which we can start to do now, so because we've got plenty of mana here. So four, five, six, seven. So in yeah, so they're both playable. Lots of foot boots as well. So we can give our kaides hexproof and so on. So that was potentially a slower hand. And just one more I think. Okay, yeah. Three hand. Three land. Three land hand. So we can pass stuff. Forgot when I played the last one, the, the ability on that action. So yeah, that, don't forget that tutors. So, so we've got removal in our hand and loads of walls. And of course we'd be swinging here as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's uh, probably our only danger if we end up with stuff in our hand which is purely removal we've got nothing to remove but that's unlikely in a multiplayer i suppose or we just don't want to we just don't want to waste our removal so yeah more ramp what do we get oh yeah that's good so yeah i suppose it's just a question if you were trying to improve this is just rebalancing this in such a way that you are definitely getting your your walls out with whatever utility they may have um i haven't seen a it a too big a problem with our land so yeah there might be an argument for you know, possibly reducing the land maybe and putting more utility in there but certainly an interesting thing to play around with how expensive is the deck that's pretty good. Um, what can we do to make it cheaper? Well, obviously, what's the? Where do I put? 
No, I'm, trying, I'm thinking of another card actually. That's normally quite expensive. Probably the most expensive here thing here is Cyclonic Rift. Um, so we've got Cyclonic Rift and the Chroma. So now we can take them out and put something similar in. Something with other utility. Our planeswalkers are pretty cheap. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. Artifacts. What's our most expensive artifact? <laughs> oh, well, meek, meek stone. Oh, yeah, of course, the lightning greaves. And land wise, I know Reliquary Tower isn't too too expensive now. These ones, they're yeah, not too bad. Obviously, some of these can be swapped out with if there is like cheap alternatives. Rogue's Passage. So, where is all the money coming from? Is it the basic lands, perhaps? <laughs> some of these don't have a price on them because of the printing yeah some people grove those are probably the the more expensive ones where's the other one I accidentally take them out. Oh no, there we go. Yeah, the Hinterland Harbour in the Glacial Fortress. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, if you wanted to, to make the deck ch even cheaper, you could sort of take these out and just, I don't know, replace them with some other form of tap land. Like the Lifelands or, I don't know, Guild Gates or anything really like that. That would bring the uh, the mana base down cost the mana pace the the creatures yeah i mean you've got 33 creatures for 34 dollars so that's what a dollar a creature so probably i mean obviously uh, judging by the fact that some of these are under a dollar quite considerably then there's going to be some more expensive stuff in here like the tree of redemption marble titan and stuff probably because it's older as well and never been reprinted So yeah, I think that, that, you know, the whole defender swapping power toughness thing is, is another interesting archetype to play around with because uh, it can be done relatively cheaply. I can't remember how much, um, you know, the other commanders are that do a similar thing. But definitely uh, another excuse for a, a toolkit probably. So thanks once again for watching. Bye for now and I will catch you in the next episode.